Today, the, the family of the Franciscans of the Immaculate have the privilege of observing, of commemorating Our Lady of Loreto. Loreto, the place where uh, tradition with a small t holds that the Holy House of Nazareth, namely the house that Jesus and Mary and Joseph lived in during the so-called hidden life of Jesus was miraculously transported by angels in the early modern period of history to this locale in Italy, this town called Loreto, a place of a destination spot of a great number of pilgrims. I've been there myself on more than one occasion. Now, of course, there is a great basilica, uh, basilica church that has been built over the spot. So it's a wonderful church that you can go to. And inside the church is the Holy House, a very small structure in comparison to the roomy church that has been built to surround it and a very small edifice compared to many of these spacious edifices, dwelling places that you and I are used to seeing and perhaps living in in our modern day, even if we might live in a modest accommodation. Still, the Holy House of Nazareth is very small indeed. And this smallness is, in the first place, a symbol of the intimacy in which lived the Holy Family. There has been, is not, and will not ever quite be that intimacy that reigned between uh, these three individuals, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, that reigned in the Holy Family. And who can describe the intimacy that characterized the relationship between our Blessed Lady and her God. An intimacy, we might add, which is sorely lacking today, that lack of intimacy with our Lord or with anybody else, for that matter, drives men to seek it in all kinds of inappropriate ways, you see. We're not made to be in isolation one from another. Man is not made to be an isolated creature, to be abandoned, to be bereft of communion with others. No, he is made, he is made with a heart. And that heart of man is created in order to reach out, to uh, find other hearts, to give himself to other hearts, to receive what other hearts want to give that charity that comes only from God. Now you and I have to learn that intimacy, don't we? See, every time that we remove ourselves from God by sin, we alienate ourselves from Him, little by little. And it doesn't take only mortal sin to do this. Although mortal sin, of course, represents a radical separation from God. But every sin that we commit, little by little, allows our relationship with our Lord to grow ever colder. And it's only charity that reignites that flame, that seals the intimacy with which God wants us to enter into with him. You and I, I say, have to learn this, relearn it, we might say. Our Blessed Lady never had to learn anything of this sort. You might say she was taught everything right at the moment of her Immaculate Conception. God gave her everything right then. And so nobody had to teach her anything. And from that first moment of her existence, she was totally united to her God. She put it into practice. It's not simply a question of her 
possessing the fullness of divine grace in her being. But she expressed her gratitude continually. And she continually and increasingly, we might point out as well, returned what it is that God gave her in the most intimate way. See, our relationship with God is not intended to be something that we keep at arm's length. How often do we do this, though? How often do men and women keep our Lord at arm's length? That's not the way that God wants it at all. And Our Lady certainly never did that. No, God was always reigning in her heart. And that's why we can say that she went over God's heart, if we may speak in such language, so that he chose her to be his dwelling place. You see? That's another significance today. She made that modest dwelling place that of God, and so her womb became the dwelling place of God who became man for you and for me, but above all for her, for you and for me because of her, as a matter of fact. So what she didn't have to learn, she wants to teach us. And all we have to do to know what it is that we have to do is to study and meditate upon the mystery that was recounted in today's gospel passage, the one we know so well, but we have only, we have not even begun to understand the mystery of the Annunciation. The announcement by the angel, God's messenger, that she was to become his mother. Imagine if God, through whatever agent he chooses, were to announce something so stupendous to us or even anything close to that, any, even a, a minuscule, in a minuscule proportion to what he announced to Our Lady. Would we be, would we be ready to receive what it is that he would want to give us. He wanted to give Mary his own son. And because she didn't have to learn how to be intimate with God, she knew just how to respond. And such a response Our Lady made was really a response she made with her whole life, not simply with the lips. That's how she teaches us to become intimate with God and never lose that intimacy. Now, in the life of the church, the Holy Spirit has inspired the form of life which we term consecrated life. For the vast majority of individuals, God has reserved what we call the married life, holy matrimony. But to a certain group of souls, he has confided something very precious. He has chosen such such souls to be a sign of what our Blessed Lady is all about, of what she represents, of who she is, about what she means to God, and about what this relationship that we have been speaking is all about. To these consecrated souls has been confided a mission to be this sign, to recall people back to uh, intimacy with God, to open their hearts to learning what this is all about, to helping them to realize what their true good is in what their happiness consists. For who ever removed from God could ever truly be happy. We said that 
Today's world is bereft of this intimacy, searching frantically to and fro for anything that will fill that tremendous void that this same world does not even want to acknowledge. This is the thing. It's, 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 it's a terrible paradox. There are so many hearts that are empty, empty. And imagine that they are actually filled with something as they go about in frustration, despair, imagining that the satisfaction for a moment might supply something, but they come up over and over again empty-handed. Empty, nothing. And instead of the, in the heart of Our Lady, we find everything. It doesn't have to be this way. And even if someone for years and years goes searching around with an empty heart, God is waiting to fill it in this life while there is still life here and now. See, God is so good. Our Lady is so good. And she'll wait and she'll wait. And when that, far, that heart, like the heart of the prodigal son, finally realizes there is no one else to whom I can turn, I shall return to the house of my father. And there she is waiting. to give us what she has in the fullness of her heart without losing anything herself, but rather catching us up into this wonderful intimacy, reestablishing us, you see. That's what she does. That's what she's all about. And for us consecrated souls, it is something that we must never lose sight of, never forget, never cease to be thankful for this great gift that God has given us. If we, of all, speaking of consecrated souls, don't know how to find intimacy with God, then how will we ever be the signpost to the rest? See, we have to hold on to that. We have to look for that. We have to put ourselves at the feet of Our Lady and learn straight from her. And she will teach us. She's so good, she cannot refuse anyone who comes to her. Jesus doesn't refuse anything of her. See? So what is it that aches in our hearts? What is missing from our hearts? We We may not even know, but she does know. And it's enough for us, all of us, I mean, to simply give her our hearts and ask her to heal them and then fill them with what is so precious, that divine grace with her son, her own son, her divine son, to mold our hearts like unto his. And then our hearts will become just like that little house in which lived Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Wouldn't that be something? How about on Judgment Day? Our Lord would find our hearts to be kind of in a shape of that dwelling of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And Jesus would find a place where he is welcome. And we would find a place, a welcome place in paradise. See, that holy house was a a paradise on earth. So let us ask Our Lady that each and every day we will, in imitation of her yes, open our hearts up to having them established as a paradise so that you and I may live in the paradise reserved for all who love God forever. Praise be Jesus and Mary.